first tasting episode of our blind box subscription program. So in this episode, I'm gonna be coaching Adam through tasting our first two wines that are in the blind tasting box and we'll be coaching you along with it so that you can hopefully guess what the wine is along with us. There's a couple steps that you wanna take in blind tasting. It's not just about getting it in your mouth as fast as you can. Um, first thing that you want to do is look at the appearance of the wine. So Adam, what do you think about the appearance of this wine? It's white. It's white! You're good at this. I know. Wow. Okay, so it's white. Uh, can you go a little bit further into describing the color? So, I would say that this is a very clear pale color. Just because I can see right through it. I can almost read words through the wine. Uh, and it also uh, doesn't have a lot of pigment to it. Right, so the reason why we look at the color of the wine is because all the color of wine comes from the skins of the grapes. So we know by looking at this that this was likely from white grapes, although you can make a white wine from red grapes, but it was likely from white grapes, so that's our first hint. The next thing that we really wanna look at is has the color deepened or gone a little bit more golden, and that would indicate a little bit of age. So what do you think about that? Uh, I think this is a very young wine, just based on the appearance. Not a lot of gold in it. Yeah. You want to be working in a well-lit room, and then you want to do like how Adam is doing here with holding the glass over the white sheet paper. Yeah, it's it's pale, it's very clear, It's very. it looks youthful to me, so it looks very young, maybe new vintage. Okay, and there's no evidence of sparkles, sparkles, there's no evidence of bubbles, bubbles. Yeah. or, or uh, sediment. No, nope, not it's at crystal all. crystal clear. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, so first step done. What do I do next? So next thing you do is you want to smell it. And so a lot of the flavor of wine actually comes from the aromatics. Your tongue can only perceive, your mouth can only perceive sensations like acidity or alcohol or tannin or saltiness. So those fruit flavors come a lot from what you're smelling. So what do you think? I get a lot of lime on this guy. There's a aroma in there, it's almost slightly petrol-y. Okay, like, okay. Like, like faint gasoline. Gasoline, okay. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting. And the more you learn about wine, the more that you'll know what the character of certain grape varieties are um, as far as what the aromatics go. So I'm sure Adam already has an idea of what it could be, although he's not gonna give it away yet. Okay, so we've got lime, we've got petrol. Anything else? How about the intensity? Is it very intense as far as aromatics go? I would say it's in the middle. It's not screaming at me with its aromas, and nor am I having to search for it. It's uh, just nicely balanced. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And now, what do you think about the ripeness of fruit? Ooh. It's kind of... I mean, I can tell that it's, it's from a cooler climate, but it definitely is showing kind of that underripe fruit. So when you have a melon and it's not like a pineapple and it's too green, you get that kind of distinct pineapple, green pineapple, and an overripe pineapple would be kind of more your warm climate. Right. So this one I, I would say is, is the more towards that underripe uh, sure. kind of climate. So Which cool. leads you to think it's probably a, a cooler climate. Yeah. Okay, so why don't you taste it? Alright, I will do that. So when he's tasting it, he you don't, you don't just want to put it in your mouth and swallow it right away or spit it out um, if that's uh, what you're doing. You want to get it everywhere in your mouth, make sure the wine kind of hits all the points. Because your palate's going to tell you a lot about the character of the wine that isn't necessarily like a fruit flavor or an aromatic. It's going to tell you about acidity. Mm -hmm. Which is quite high. Quite high acidity. Yeah. Okay. It's also going to tell you about the alcohol content. So if you feel a burning on the roof of your, on the top of your tongue. Mm -hmm. I would say lower than than midpoint. So a little bit under medium. Under medium yeah. as far as, as alcohol goes. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't ask. Why did you think it was a high acidity? What happened in your mouth? Oh, um, my mouth is watering like crazy. Right. And that usually leads me to high acid, but more saliva you produce. Yeah, so if you feel a, like a tingling under your tongue here, that's um, where your saliva producers, saliva glands. manufacturers, glands, glands. Sli salivary glands, that's where your <laughs> salivary glands are, it's early, and if, if you feel those going off, then that's, that's an indicator of the acid being high. Mm. Okay, what else is this telling you in your mouth? Hold on, I need to take another sip. Second sip. 
about the the body or the structure of the wine. Okay, tell me about it. Well, there's there's many different uh, ways you can describe it, but the, the way that we describe it most often here is is, is it closer to like a skim milk or or more, not I wouldn't say whole milk, but two percent. Let's go with that. Okay. Yeah. Homogenized. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, okay. that's good. So you know, your skim milk would be like a lean body, more of that watery style, whereas the the more dense the body, it would be closer to a big body grape, like a Chardonnay, for example. Right. So maybe on the other end, you'll have like a Sauvignon Blanc. Right. Yeah. Right. So the, like maybe a, an extensive Sauvignon Blanc, a New Zealand, something like that, will be like your skim milk, and then a New World Chardonnay, like a California Chardonnay, that'll be like your whole milk. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So that's how we describe body. Yeah. So uh, what do you think of this one? Mmm. It's slightly lean. Uh, it's not, uh, I'd say it's like 1%. It's kind of like right right in the middle, it's okay. a little bit off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not knowing what this is, what would you recommend as a food pairing for this one? Um, something spicy. Okay, why is that? High acid uh, and something spicy usually. Okay. Uh, they go really well together. Right, yeah. it's gonna ignite the flavors. I totally agree with you. Ignite the flames. So, Adam, what do you think this wine might be? I think this is a slightly newer vintage. German Riesling. German Riesling, okay. And what do you think that the price point is for this wine? Under 30. Under 30 Under 30, above 25. Okay, yeah. well, I'll let me just grab the bottle. You're not, you're not wrong. You're not 100% right, but you're not wrong. Because <laughs> I... Pull the fast one on me. No! For the first blind wine in your blind box, For wine one of your blind box. <laughs> For wine one of your blind box. I wanted to do something that would possibly be very easy to identify, um, but also has a little bit of a curveball, which Adam didn't hit that curveball. But he got partially right. It's a Riesling, mm. but it's from Austria. I also broke the budget a little bit, because I just really like this wine. You so. are the boss. You guys are getting a good deal on this one. Um, okay, so this is the Hedler Langlois Riesling 2016, which comes from Austria. This one had a good critic score. I can't remember what that is off the top of my head, but... It's good. It's really good. It's really good. Yeah. So how would I have identified the difference between the German and the Austrian? <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> it's legit. Actually. I'll probably dryer. Um, so if you guessed Riesling, you did a really outstanding job <laughs> on this wine. Uh, it would definitely be hard to identify the difference between an Austrian and a German Riesling and a blind tasting, unless you've tasted a number of them side by side uh, in the past. Uh, so if you got this, congratulations, and we're looking forward to tasting wine number two with you.